thank you for coming today. My name is Diane, the Prescription Drug Project Coordinator Alliance. We are a prevention Today we're going to talk about an issue that's affecting our teens, and that is So according to the National Institute on Drug Abuse, there's a real danger with our prescription medicines. It's a dangerous, addictive, and needed as deadly as our street drugs like crack, cocaine, and heroin. There's a reason when we get our prescription, they put a warning sign on our bottles. And if someone intentionally misuses that, it could be dangerous. Deadly and dangerous. Um, these pain relievers, like it in Oxycontin, Percocet, Opatana, and Methadone, are in the same category as opiates, like heroin. So they're, they're made up of the same stuff. So that's why they're just as deadly as heroin. They can be addictive. You can suffer withdrawals and develop a tolerance for these painkillers just like you do with heroin. So that's when a lot of people get addicted to some of these pain pills. Their next, when they get cut off from that supply, they go to heroin because sometimes it's cheaper and it's more available now in the community than these pain pills. So the Center of Disease Control did a um, survey and in July of 2014, 46 people are dying every day from an overdose of prescription painkillers in the United States. 46 people every day in 2014. 259 million um, providers wrote prescription. No, these are 259 million prescriptions in the United States. That's almost one bottle of painkillers for every person in the United States. 259 prescriptions. So our kids, every minute of every day, the poison control answers a call about a child getting into medicines or with counter and prescription, every minute of every day. In 2012, one child every eight minutes was taken to the emergency room because they got into medicines. That's 2012, one child every eight minutes. Three out of four of these um, cases, the medicine belonged to a parent or a grandparent. You know, you think of your, your elderly population, right? Your seniors, they, they, they lose mobility in their fingers, so when they get out their pills, they, one might drop on the ground, and then their grandkids come over and crawl on the ground, and they just, they didn't see it fall, because it's something like their blood pressure mass, so it's just a tiny little thing, and they ingest it and get sick. Um, another thing the senior population does is they always, oftentimes, their meds are all over the counter, and into their little pill boxes. So when the kids come over, they're just there. Or in their car, or in their glove compartment, or in their Um. So this now. Have potential. It's higher than the state average, and their drug of choice is pain relievers. But they're not only abusing. Stimulants like kids are on four eighty eight. So in twenty thirteen, the Arizona Board of Pharmacy reported that twenty seven thousand six hundred sixty one prescriptions were written, and look at the amount of pills prescribed. Over one point nine million pills were prescribed. And one over 1.3 million were pain pills, right? The most dangerous kind of pills. It's kind of scary. So here's available pills, right? So one of the five, take them from your home medicine cabinet. Think of where your medicines are. Mine are in my kitchen, mm -hmm. right? Some are in their medicine cabinet in their bathroom. 
So would you know if one or two pills were missing from the pain pills you had when you had your knee surgery two years ago or your hip shoulder pain or whatever it was? You know, some many, many years, we wouldn't realize if one or two were missing because they, may, they might have made more, but we keep them for that maybe other. So over half get them from their friends. Which their friends probably get them from their <laughs> have them, or their grandparents in the cabinet, right? One out of seven get get them from a family member or a relative. So it's just there, right? They're at our house, just like alcohol. It's just there. They don't have to go on the street and beg for these things because they're at home. So this is an actual video of parents affected by um, their kids' choice to abuse prescription drugs. As a parent, I think most of you are concerned about all these illegal drugs, the heroin, the marijuana, uh, the meth. But you need to understand that the legal drugs are just as dangerous. They're getting in trust with your neighbors, your friends. It's not hard enough. Oh, sorry. That was the next, right? It looks like it's still up. Okay. Yes. Looks like As a parent, I think most of you are concerned about all these illegal drugs, the heroin, the marijuana, uh, the meth, but you need to understand that the legal drugs are just as dangerous. They're getting it from your neighbors, your friends. It's not hard at all. If people are taking prescription drugs for non-medical purposes, they are not taking medicine. They're doing drugs. It's easy to start. It's not prescription drugs or prescription for a reason. If you take too many of uh, a prescription drug topic, you die. Chelsea was very well liked by her friends and by her teachers. Ronnie was going down to Tennessee State to be the next player to come out of Tennessee State. Joy was extremely popular, just surrounded by friends. Mark was an athletic, fit-looking kid. Beard enjoyed talking and debating with any and all people. The prescription pain pill problem is a huge epidemic. This is an epidemic. This is an epidemic that has infiltrated our young people. We never had a conversation with Joey about prescription drugs because we truly had no idea that there was any kind of recreational use going on. The first time I started doing painkillers was when I was 17. I would steal pills from my friend's uh, mom. Her stepmom had strep for Vicodin. That was like heaven. I went in her room and stole Vicodin every day. He would uh, ask to use the bathroom in other people's homes. And he'd go in there and go in their medicine cabinets and steal prescription medications are available every day. I was the star best player. He always had his hair braided. What he got into was the pill use. Like Jackal, Mr. Hyde. My son looked at me with these eyes. Uh, my coach was walking towards me. He just had this crazy look on his face. He goes, You think they might have found your brother? 
And I was like, to me, I was like goofing. I was like, I didn't know he went missing. So I was like trying to make him like goofing off. And uh, he's like, no, Justin, seriously, he just body. And uh, I was like, wait a minute. I was like, whoa, what? He's like, yeah, they, they found, they discovered a body in an apartment in Telford. I never thought my son would take prescription drugs without a prescription. Parents often trip themselves up by asking a simple question, are you using drugs? No. One has to be able to say, I'm seeing some signs here that concern me. He was a little bit more argumentative. We thought that was maybe hormones. The person has what we call pinpoint pupils. Literally, the pupils look like a pinpoint. She slept odd hours. We didn't know why he was sleeping so late. If I wasn't able to get high, then I didn't want to get out of bed because, you know, the physical Charles. We were missing tinfoil from the kitchen, missing spoons. We find the dens that were cut in half with straws. There were a lot of charges coming on the credit cards. We thought that there was somebody stealing money out of our account. That's probably a pretty good clue that there's something going on. Joey was pretty upset with his roommates. They were spending all their money on medication. Had I known that the medications that they were taking were so dangerous, I would have told them, you're not even going back to that place. If you feel something's going on, you gotta investigate. I thought it was just a phase. We or, you know, we were in high school, and it's just sort of a phase you go through as you're growing out. It's great, it's fine. You grow out of it. And I thought he was on that track. Joey had been found, and, and he was unconscious. He had all these medications that he had just received from this doctor. More than likely, he questioned, snorted it. We're just being completely hit blindly by, you know, a situation we had absolutely no understanding of and um, no notice of. And in the meantime, my husband's in the house. I'm out front in the, in the front of the house just, you know, wondering what we're, we're dealing with here. And so finally, Joe just came out and said, he's come on. I was downstairs getting ready for work. Cookie told me she couldn't get Mark up. Mark was powerful and had the nickname in some circles of Tank. I reminded her that what she had to do was get a cup of water and splash him with it and stay out of his way. And she told me uh, it was different. We found a clear plastic bag with loose pills. I'm not sure if he even thought he was doing drugs, and I know that sounds crazy, but it's not like him. It was heroin or cocaine. We followed the ambulance to the hospital. A few minutes later, um, someone came in and, and told us that Mark was dead. We never thought that was a possibility. I had no idea that kids were using this. I came home one night, saw the basement light on, and went up to the window, and uh, my son was. Uh, Crushing and snorting pills. We would find pills in the shoes, in the jackets that are hanging in the closet, in the pockets. I found some pills hidden under his cushion. They were in his socks. I never checked with his socks. He took the light switch plate off and put them in there. Look everywhere. Is it an invasion? No. You're doing the right thing as a parent. I would question Chelsea, and she would always assure me that everything is fine and nothing's wrong. Kids don't want to get in trouble, so they're going to tell you exactly what you hear. There was always something down deep inside that said to me, something's wrong. You doubt yourself because you wonder if you're making a bigger deal out of something. You know, maybe deep down my parents knew that I was high. You can't always believe your child. Their lies get bigger when they're trying to hide substance abuse. I knew her inside and out, and I remember Chelsea as the little girl that she used to be. I looked at him and I only saw the most beautiful son in the world. It was very difficult to think that she would be lying to me. Well, she was. She was out using and abusing prescription drugs. Long-acting agents like OxyContin are meant to be delivered in the body over a period of hours, if not a day. If they're chewed, crushed, snorted, you get the entire dose at one blast, and if the body's not ready to accommodate that, you will stop breathing. We needed to call the police. 
but what are the neighbors going to think? Put all of that aside and focus on what's important, as difficult as it may be. Families can't get too caught up in the idea that, uh, oh, there may be an arrest in charge of my son or daughter, uh, they could be in jail, um, they, they could be in the morgue. The law saved my life. If my mom hadn't called the cops on me, I don't know where I would be right now. It was the most difficult thing to do, to call the police on your on your own child. It was horrible. I have gone from putting importance on things like what college are you going to get into to just celebrating the fact that she's alive today. Um, she's doing very well. She's clean and sober. She's productive. She's sweet. And I have her back, and I'm thankful. And it's wonderful. Aaron had spent the night at a friend's, and they found him blue and non responsive. They took him to a local hospital. He was using Vicodin, uh, which we found out through his toxicology, what was in his blood system. I witnessed him have two heart attacks in ICU. He had staph, he had pneumonia. He went through seizures. The doctor was explaining to us that he was going to die. We held his hands on each side and we started crying and he just laid there. People use the medications in an abusive way, not knowing what the consequences are and somebody ends up here. Within 24 hours, Aaron had opened his eyes. Parents are the first line of defense in terms of prescription drug abuse. You gotta sit your kids down. You gotta tell them about the severity of the problem. There's a number of steps that you can take. Educate your child and yourself very early. Anybody who feels that this can't happen to my child. Or it could happen to your kid. Make sure that you don't have excess pills in your home. Keep your medication marked up because you're never going to notice if something's fine. What my mom does is she has to take home pee tests that I got to take. No, I want to keep my mom proud of me. I don't want to let her down. You need to have the conversation with them about drug and substance abuse. And you need to include prescription drugs and guide them so they're able to get through their high school years, to college, and through their college years, drug free. To have this conversation before it's too late to have this conversation. <laughs> because of course you see yourself as a parent or grandparent. So what are your immediate responses to that video? <laughs> it's it's sad. Yeah. Sad? Mm -hmm. Does anything surprise you about it? Anything you learned about prescription drugs? Well, yes, it should be locked up. So and the doctor prescribed certain uh, dose for you according to what you weigh and your allergies. And so a kid gets into another person's prescription, they could be 200 pounds, and this could be a 100 pound teenager. Mm -hmm. So the first time they take that medicine, they can have respiratory distress and that. Um, so I think you think these families wish they could have done differently. If they talk to all, them. talk to them. Yeah. Notice that there's. I mean, you just you think it's going to happen to you. Right? You never think it's going to happen to your kid. And these people seem like the kids seem like normal, 
kids, athletes, and active kids. Well, and think so. about the athletes, mm-hmm. right? They get injured, they sprain their ankle, mm-hmm. they break their legs. So they go to the sports medicine guy, and what do they do with the kids? And how many parents know that prescription pain relievers are a opioid, which is the same category as heroin? I didn't know until I started working here that they're just as addictive as heroin and potential for abuse and withdrawal symptoms and tolerance and all that stuff. What about expired medicine? Is it just as potent? Um, it's not, probably not as potent as it was when it was yeah. first prescribed, but still it's has. It's still that. Yeah, it's still an opioid. Yeah, I might have some in there that I like. Um, so here's how you can take action right now you know this is an issue and a problem so you safeguard safeguard your medicines at home you take an inventory if you're on I mean medicines are great for people that have issues right but you should know how many pills are in that bottle um, keep track of your refills don't leave them out the open for anyone to get in. Even the plumber that comes to your house can take a few pills and we do every know. So remember when our kids were little, we locked up our cabinets, so we should lock up our medicines. And those are just samples of safe storage. So like a just a lockbox you buy at the you know Home Depot or some now prescriptions have the locking lid, so they won't know the code to get into it. And then the RX Armory is that cute little white box you put in your, it has like this 3M really strong adhesive tape that you put inside your cupboard. And then that little door is a, some, is a key and then there's like a combination lock. So you lock it inside your house. Because we've heard of someone also who have done like the first lock box and hit it somewhere in their house. And people knew that that man was on a lot of chronic mm-hmm. cancer or some you know, debilitating condition. They came to the house, broke in, and just took his medicine. Just took that lockbox and all this medicine. Mm-hmm. So um, dispose of medicine properly. We don't flush it down the toilet anymore because it's getting into our water. We could drink it. So you can either take your pill bottle and black out your information, or you can dump all your pills into a nice little Ziploc bag. It looks really pretty because it's usually all colorful. Mm-hmm. Um, these are most local police departments have drop boxes. Both our Cass Grand stations have them, as well as the substation over here. Is it like outside where you just go drop it? Um, I've never. It's heard. inside. When as soon as you walk into the police station, I know this. It's right there. Oh, yeah. And then at the old one downtown, yeah. it's right there too. It looks like that. That little green door is like a mm-hmm. library with drops. Mm-hmm. So you just open it up and throw it in the bottles too. Like you can just put them all together and get the empty. Either way, just okay. black it out your information if you don't want it, your name and um, stuff on there. So yeah, your pet medicines, your vitamins, and your supplements. You can't put creams or lotions or sharps, angels, if you're a diabetic. If you don't have a storage for them that you get rid of, you can use an old um, laundry soap container. I asked the waste management people at the city. You can put your needles in there and then uh, put the lid on and put duct tape around it and just throw it in your trash. Mm. He also said you can just get rid of your cream and your liquid. In your trash that goes to the dump, mm. so not like recycled or anything like that. We used to have drop box days where everybody would advertise and they could all come to a certain location and get rid of their medicine, but it became such an epidemic that now we have these. There's 18 drop boxes all over the county, mostly in well, now they're in police stations. So Arizona City has them, their substation, South Work has a substation. Is it a private company that picks it up? Um, well, the Pinot County Sheriff's Office picks up their like mm-hmm. their substations and um, it goes into an incinerator where they take mm-hmm. them to Tucson. The Casper Police Department are in charge of theirs, so it's like evidence that they take. So they dispose of them every month. I mean, they empty out the thing and then mm-hmm. burn them with their other stuff mm-hmm. that they incinerate. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we recommend if people are not living close to the drop box that they take their pills, dissolve them into like kitty litter or coffee grounds. It's because people still go through the garbage looking for pills. Mm-hmm. So if these aren't available, you just dissolve in that stuff to get rid of it. But mostly, every police station in the county has one of those. Well, Michelle, if I give you a cup of coffee. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so here's your checklist. So your job is to talk with the kids in your life about prescription pills, because a lot of them don't know that a lot of them get their wisdom teeth pulled, and the first drug they prescribe for you is Percocet or Vicodin. Mm-hmm. 
So a lot of kids get sick on that strong medicine mm -hmm. as well. So just try Advil first mm -hmm. if you want to. You know, if it doesn't work, you should just have like a three-day supply and then be done with it. Mm -hmm. Security medicines like we talked about, mm -hmm. dispose of them. Now you know where to dispose of them. Mm -hmm. And don't share your medicines. Mm -hmm. Sharing is not caring. So when your friend comes <laughs> over and says, oh my gosh, my back really hurts, I have some medicine that my doctor gave me when I had. I got some muscle relaxants, I got some pain pills, here you go. Because yours, they're prescribed for you, and if that person dies, the police are going to come to you and say, did you get rid of them? Mm -hmm. You're going to be liable for that person's death. Ask your doctor and dentist if they're signed up for the prescription drug monitoring program. So this is a program where prescribers can get onto through the Arizona Board of Pharmacy and see if their patient has been going around to other prescribers mm -hmm. trying to get pills. Mm -hmm. And they can say, hey, wait a minute, you were just prescribed 30 oxy last month. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to talk about it. You may have a problem here. Mm -hmm. So 49% um, of Cash Brand doctors are now on it. That's a part of my job too, is to encourage them mm -hmm. to sign up for that program because they can be liable now. Some doctors have been sued because their patient died. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then tell your free friends about it. So we spread the word. And another interesting thing is 50% of parents don't talk to their kids about substance abuse. It's not a prescription drugs or alcohol, so they don't know what their parents think about abusing substances. And if the statistics are that if you do have that conversation with your child or those children in your life, that 50% will choose not to use because they know how you feel about it. And parents are still a huge issue of a child's so influence, not mm -hmm. issue. Well, they're fun both. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any questions? Okay, now we got the post test. Oh, oh. No, it's a separate one. Yep. We're going to go back and correct them. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. Whoops. I'm not very good at this. Wait, I think there's another slide too. See? <laughs> there's two more. What happened to your clicker? I <laughs> don't <laughs> oh, Tammy. <laughs> she, I'm trying. I'm, just, I'm distracted by the mic. Hey, Tammy, over and out for online. <laughs> Thank you if anyone is online. <laughs>